Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. Many games look easy, but take nothing for granted. Two games, that of Adams and that of Abasov. And these are two different games. Are going, going and going. And there is no end to them. After seven games and five tiebreakers, we still have no end in sight. If you don't like draws, do not look at the Adams games, because in seven games you saw seven draws. The Abasov peer room games are entirely different. In one game, the one won, and in the other, the other one. So we still have a tie in the end. Contrary to what I said in the game I brought out before this one, there are two games in the tie breaks and not one. I'm not sure how he slipped, but what I said was incorrect. Nahad won both of his games, and this is why he moved to the next round. No need to say any two from these four players can go through. The only things that do change are the time controls, and you does better in faster time controls. After a very long type of marathon run, Adams has lost, and Abasov also one from Pirum. And just for the record, and to clear the confusion about how the tie breaks work, here is all you need to know. I'm sure you can read it up, and if I'm going too fast, for your liking, you can also pause. Okay, today, and after those long marathon runs, the miss is starting to clear. When it comes to pairings, there is no diagram. I will be able to show that will fit on one single screen. What I can do is to show at least half, <laughs> okay, of how the pairings pan out. And because I'm slightly unsure if you can see what is going on, let me try and zoom in. Because again, this may not work either. And let me zoom in even further. So this is a zoom of a zoom. Maybe I should have done this before the tournament started, but better late than never. Every single player has a number according to their rating. So if we take number 72, Abazov, eliminate a Piorun, and now he will play the winner from the group below. And we know who went through here. Wang Hao won his game and Maxime Rodstein won his. So it is number 40 v number 25. And the winner will meet the winner from the next group. We have 34 players going to round 2 and 17 games today. With no one being able to win a very easy game because games are not easy. There are some very big surprises. This game today I called the Great Escape. It's the one between Dingli Ren and Morsisian, Sergei Morsisian of Armenia. Is that in Greece? <laughs> okay. Dingli Ren White is the true beast of the East. He went for 1d4 and the game went into the shallot variation the Queen's Gambit decline. So let's come to this point and expand. So we have d5, c4, c6, the Slav, knight of three, knight of six, e3, a very standard move, and here is a shallot variation, a move characterized by this bishop move to f5. It doesn't look particularly threatening, but there are plenty of ways to benefit if you're playing with the black pieces. There are two main responses here. One is bishop d3 to trade the bishops off, and two is knight c3, and this is what Ding Liren did. a6, bishop d2, which is something we don't get to see Ding Liren play often. Got this guy going. And here, white can go for one of many responses. Knight h4 is often played, but if you don't mind Mr. Bishop on f5, there is this queen response. 
Ding Li Ren went for this queen move. Sagay also went for something we don't get to see frequently. He responded in this way. So he clearly wants to control the seventh and hopes at some stage to push on with this B pawn. Now only now Li Ren charges after Mr. Bishop. Bishop E4, and when these two guys came off, F3, sending the bishop here on G6. Many people are very much tempted to remove the bishop, but if you commit to this, bear in mind this corner rook has a direct pass into the game. And if you're looking to castle, we're looking to castle law. And this is why many players think twice if they want to trade their knight for Mr. Bishop. Liren castled queenside. And when the knight made his way into the game, yep, the knight was handed over for the bishop. King b1, bishop e7, and possibly Saga is looking to castle short. Rook c1, knight back, and bishop rides into d3. And this game looks very interesting, even if black changes his mind and never castles. Sergei charged after the queen, and here Ding Liren stops for the first time and sits down to think. He was trying to find a suitable location for his queen. Nearly nine minutes later, he got her to come here. Knight back, and when Liren also went for a knight move, I'm sure Sergei is looking at b5. But before he commits, he got the rook to return to the corner. Ding Liren tried to cut through the center with this initiative. Sergei ignored and went for a rook repositioning, which also rules out any b5 initiatives. When Ding Liren pushed this guy, he does have a good grip of the center, and we know f6 is not possible unless he wants to get finished in a GIF. This is how Sergei answered. G3, G6, and A3. And we know this is a type of waiting move. And look at how Sergei is trying to solve his castling problem. No castles, but a simple king repositioning, challenging Ding Liren to come up with something stunning. H4 takes, takes, and takes. And when Ding Liren chose to swap the rocks, this is what he did. With the queen having this bishop's back, he's fine where he is. But if Ding Liren finds a way to get to him before the king makes his way to g8 or g7, we know what will happen. Sagay so needed no reminder and went exactly for a king move. Here is where he placed him. Queen back and queen e7 and the rook now on c8 will also get activated and if need be, Rook h8 looks absolutely fine. Black is a pawn up, has a single bishop, and two knights with a bishop pair and a single knight. Queen g1, got the rook to come and join the corner. And anything white has going is now pretty much nullified. Bishop e3, queen back, and a knight reposition in here, and white may be looking to sack either the knight or bishop to go after the king. We can try this variation depending on how black reacts. I don't think a 2654 player will not see this potential sack and went exactly for the response to stop white from hitting on g6. Ding Liren was trying to find another way to try and get to g6 and after 11 plus minutes, he came up with this queen repositioning. An 1800 type of player can clearly see what Ding Li Ren has cooking. I'm not gonna tell you because Ding Li Ren will play this way. If you go for any attempt to trade the queens, you will get punished. But can you see how? All you need is this knight takes check and when the knight is captured, there goes the big lady, and however you decide to play it, 
Weiss is winning by a clear mile. Coming back, Sagay answered in this way. Bukchi won, forthcoming. And to avoid all the dangers associated with any taking on G6, Sega went exactly for the move probably anyone will go for. Has anyone chose to go for this king move to the corner? This is exactly what happened here. Knight H3, and we know where their knight is going next. And here Sega went for a queen repositioning. And given this was played in just one minute, why did he place the queen here? And what has he got cooking? Knight g5, takes and takes, got the king going once again. And how does anyone make progress here? The knight on c6 and f8 cover both squares on e7 and d8, but white has another problem. I think this guy on d4 needs to be covered, and yes, Dingley Ren covers him by bringing in his queen. Queen b3, going after Mr. Bishop, Got him to retaliate instantly. And when the queen backed off here, Dingley Ren looks to have blundered here big time. Any ideas how you blunder? This is what he did. Dingley Ren is the world's number three. But why did he go for this queen move here? And what is he trying to accomplish? If queen e2, this would force the queen to return to f4. And if you allow this rook to now the pressure on the second, there is rook c1, a possible rook g2. Even after bishop g1, black only needs to hold. Knight h7, and once the knight gets active, I don't think white can survive. This variation doesn't end here. But who's stopping you from moving on? There is queen e3, knight g5, and when the queens come off, bishop d3, rook g2, and this variation never ends. But one problem lower rated players have when playing against much stronger ones is psychology. Or their fear of losing, even when they have a very decent position. So yeah, it's said, if the world's number three went for this queen move to f6, he knows what he's doing. Once Sergei went for this knight response, okay, you may want to question this very move because where is the knight going next? Obviously, the knight will come into c4. And should you allow this, it might be game over. It's a tremendous attack on the king because, however, you choose to defend here. Even after bishop c1, this pawn will come off with the nasties of checks. And this will be how black wins. And what a way to win the best player China has. So... How do you stop this knight from coming into c4? Is there a way to stop him, guys? Work on this one, and if you find a way to do this, you will also save the day. Dingley Ren has many excellent games. He's not a great attacker, but a great defender too. So, what you see here is a blunder, which we never got to hear. So if you come back to this queen move to f6, this is what you needed to hear. So how does Dingley Ren do his magic here? Don't wait to see the answer, but do work for it here, guys. I will show in a few seconds. And pause if you need to buy more time. We talked about hitting on g6, and without hesitation, this was the moment for Ding Liren to put things right. By the way, knight a5 was also a blunder because it allowed this course of action. Takes, 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 and takes. Got the king to hit the corner. And for this new check, Sagan realized he blew it and settle for a draw. He still keeps his head high, but there is another game to follow between these two. But look how easy things can go wrong, even for the world's very best. A narrow escape, to say the least. But I think the title does more than justice here. There are many draws today, 
but we will have to wait until tomorrow to see how it all ends. Until soon, everyone, this is your chess puzzler.